Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk with Alexis Texas, and we are back with another episode. And I have a dear friend of mine, Manuel Ferreira. Welcome, welcome to Private feel, Talk. Uh, yeah, thank you. I feel super welcome. You feel super welcome? Yeah. Well, I am excited for you to be here. Um, we haven't, you know, we don't always get to catch up. You know, we were just at AVN in Vegas and it was yep. like very hectic. Um, you were doing your thing over there at, uh, with Twitch and yep. we want to get and talk to all of that stuff. So for private talk out there, um, he is um, a French pornographer, director, connoisseur of all those things. And um, yeah, you kind of do it all. You, you, um, you've been in the business for quite some time now. Yeah, it's my 23rd year this year, yeah. I'm an old man. In the You're an old man. So tell us how it all started. Tell us your background. Let us know a little bit about you. So I'm from France. Uh, I uh, went to school to become a PE teacher. And uh, years ago, with a friend of mine that was before, like the whole like Photoshop made easy for anyone, uh, we uh, made a birthday card for my best friend's brother where we had a porn magazine and we would like cut girls getting fucked and replaced the, the girl's face by pictures of him. Oh, nice. And on, in that magazine, there was, a, there was a casting call for, for a porn, like, be, like, try to be a porn male performer, you know. And uh, my friends, they always used to make fun of me. They used to call me Rocco, as Rocco C. Freddy, because I was having sex with so many women. They were like, yeah, you're like a porn star. You should do it. And my best friend dared me. He was like, I dare you to do it. I'm like, we all know it wasn't happen what happens when you dare a man. Right, like, right? I'm like, what do you mean you dare me? I'll do it. And then, but I never thought that, uh, I never thought they would contact me back. I thought like, yeah, whatever. So what, what was the process? Did you have to send them so pictures? You, you or had what to did send you? a picture, but not of your dick or anything naked, like just a picture of you. Just like a headshot. And um, talk about you and say, like, like talk about why So what was you your interview? Like, hi, I'm Manuel, and I want to fuck lots of bitches. I already do it, so why not get paid for it? What was your, like, if you were a housewife, what would your sex <laughs> title be? <laughs> well, basically, I just said, like, hey, um, I love women, and, yeah, basically, I want to fuck a lot of women. Like, the, that's my motivation. Like, my money was never my motivation in this in industry. I just want... I was a big for, uh, porn fan, too, so, like, I was like, wait, Maybe I can have sex with like, like super hot girls or girls that I was fan of. I didn't think uh, it would happen. Actually, I thought like, yeah, he's daring me. I'm gonna answer. They're never gonna call me back. The end. They called me back, and I went to do the casting. And when I went to do the casting, there was like about forty other dudes, and we all had to do like an interview where you go in that room and there was two super hot girls. They were like asking us questions and like, what's your fantasy? What would you do to us? This type of shit, right? And um, out of all the guys, they had to pick five guys. And I was one of the guys they picked. And what I did. How excited were you? No, actually, I was <laughs> terrified. Uh, You're like, fuck, now what do I do? Right. And also, I thought they were doing the casting and then call us back to come back maybe a week later to shoot the scene. But it was like, no. They pick you, now we're going to go on set and shoot the scene. Um. So I was like, fuck. And one of the things that was funny is they ask you questions, but they never asked us to get naked, right? And we were in the office of a the magazine, and there was a huge corridor, and they lined us up. And then all of a sudden, the two girls, they were like, all right, now we're done talking. Pull out your dicks. And there's 40 <laughs> guys, actually. <laughs> 39 guys pulling their dick out. Some of the guys are already like jerking off. And I was like, fuck. I'm not pulling my dick out in front of everyone. I was like, fuck, what the fuck? And I remember next to me, there was a dude. And he had a fro. And he had no teeth in front. And he was wearing just like a vest from a suit, but without a shirt underneath. Sexy. And, and like, right? And... and uh, I look at him and he gives me the biggest smile without his teeth and he's like jerking off. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Here? Like, I'm like, I can't do this shit. But then the girls start walking and the closer they get to me, I feel like, shit, I have to... I gotta share my dick. Right? And then I pull my dick out but like, I was at the same time, those two girls were so hot that I was fucking hot as fuck. And those two girls, they stop in front of me, they're like, 
like, yo, what's, <laughs> like, what's what, your name? What, what is this? <laughs> and they're like, you, you can step forward. And then I step forward. They were talking to his cock prior yeah, to talk, not his sure. face, his talk. Yeah, his yeah, cock. They didn't care, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I was one of the first they picked out of five guys. And then we went to do the shoot. And when we were on set, uh, out of the five guys, I was the only one to actually get home. The funny thing is, uh, before me, three guys were like, like, we would go one by one, and they, the three first guys fell. And then I'm next, and I'm hard as a rock, and you can see the director is all happy. Like, it's like, finally, we at least have one that's gonna get home. And the girl literally sucked my dick for 10 seconds, and I came. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that was not the best start, right? That's really not a great scene. Right? You know. And you see the director like, no, like what the? And he looks at me. He's like, well, do you think you can do it again? I'm like, well, uh, I don't know. I can. I gonna go wash a little bit and then come back. I went to wash my dick, came back, and I was still home. I was still like so, like so into it. And then I ended up doing the scene, and the fifth guy after me couldn't do it. So, so how long did you last the second time? A, a lot more, like a 20, lot. 25 minutes, you know, like enough for them. And uh, after that, they, uh, a few months later, uh, you have to know, I was in uh, college uh, to become a PE teacher. So I, I had three years left to, uh, to finalize. Uh, and... Um, so I didn't think I would make a career of porn. I just tried and had fun. And then a couple of months later, they called me because they were doing another episode like that. But because everyone failed but me on the first one, they thought, we're going to bring him back and use him as a stunt cock if the other guys can do it, which happened. So I was on the second one, but you wouldn't see my face because they didn't want to make it obvious that they reused me. And on that set, uh, the two girl, out of the two girls, I show up on that set, and one of the two girls was a girl I was in college. Uh, not college. Uh, in French college, it's junior high school. I had no idea she became a porn star. And then, but it was super awkward because I, I knew all her brothers, all her family. Both of y'all were like, who's going to tell whose family? Because right. now this is going to uh, get awkward for everybody at Thanksgiving. Super. Well, the thing, you know, <laughs> the thing is... I didn't know, but she became like an actual porn star. She was known. Her family knew, but my family didn't know about this. But uh, then she uh, told me, but you want to do more? And she started introducing me to other directors that she knew. And uh, uh, the, the, I, because in my mind, I was doing this for fun. It wasn't about money. And I was for the first three years of my career, I was doing condom only. And uh, so she would introduce me to some people and I was going to college at the same time that I was doing this for, for three years. So how long did you know that it was actually going to be a career that you were, like, were actually becoming successful and it was no longer fun that, yeah, it's not just maybe because of the money, but you were making good money. And like, how did you kind of switch that mindset to like take it to the next level and become a career? Well, back then, I wasn't even making good money. Like, like they would pay me per scene. It was the equivalent of like 80 bucks a scene. But that's better than like having it. But I was a student living in my parents, you know, place. Like to me, it was crazy. Yeah. Like, you know. Because you you're just fucking. And it's it, like a good time. Like it, you said, like, it wasn't about the money. It's about the enjoyment, the like it, satisfaction. It, exactly, exactly. Because you'd be jerking off in your you know, dorm room anyways. For sure, for <laughs> sure. And um, what's, uh, what's funny is uh, right when I finished school, I had to make a decision. And I met, I, I actually met Rocco Freddy. Uh, his cousin, who lived in France and uh, was shooting movies in France, and he's like, uh, he hired me to do a scene for him, and uh, it was a scene with three girls, and uh, when I was done, he was like, what are you doing? Like, you're wasting your life. You can't be a PE teacher. Like, you have to do porn, and if you want, a month from now, I'm taking you with me to Prague to work with my cousin. And in Europe, Rocco Freddy was the number one star, even in America. I mean, yeah, you can talk about Ron Jeremy or other people, but we're talking about real performers. Yes, not, he's, he's a favorite of mine. He's very, yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and, I know. made him tap out once. That's another yeah. story. 
<laughs> so how was it to like perform in front of someone that was like so iconic to you that you were like were you nervous you still were like fuck it hard again, as a rock and you just did what it was again super nervous and even more nervous because uh, he was shooting without condoms so of course tested and everything and it was my first time ever having sex without condom because when I was younger I always used condoms so how crazy. did you get convinced to not? Like, was it... Well, I knew... Did you not want to work? I mean, like, how did you make that decision to just say, fuck it? Because, again, it is a, it is a big risk. We are still tested. Of and course. it's something that we choose to do, but it is still, you know, it's kind of like Russian roulette. We never really know what's going to happen. Yeah. After, um, after three years doing amateur porn, uh, I've had too many people telling me, like, listen, like, you're meant to do this. And we're talking also about a time where there was no Viagra, there was nothing. Either you were good or you couldn't do this job. And like, also I would see other performers sometimes come on the amateur side, but they were like well-known European stars, male porn stars, and I would kill those guys. I, I was like, I mean, I'm blowing my own horn, but I was so much better than those guys that were well-known male porn I mean, stars. you wouldn't be who you are today if you wouldn't, I mean, see the difference. It's, I mean, it's, it's, like, saying, it's like saying that like a level of like um, skill no, skill level, you just mm -hmm. see it and you don't. Like sometimes you, you don't, there's yeah. nothing saying that's any less or anything, but you're just better. You can't be a good male porn star if you don't have an ego. You have to know that you, you can do it. If you second guess yourself, you're going to fail. So you never second guess yourself. You've always, from the beginning, just went in because, like you said, it's the motto of like not money. Do you think that that's a big reason why you who, who you are is because it was never money driven? Of why like that? It was never money driven. I'm a real woman lover. I was just so focused on having sex with beautiful women and and having fun. I never thought, well, like uh, you know, I do this so I can make this much money. I can get a better life. I can travel or anything like that. I, to this day, do I make great money? Yeah, I make awesome money. But it's it was never my motivation. So it's more like it was a calling. Because like myself, of course. I, you know, it's something that I never knew. Mine was more, of a, wait, obviously we have a different story getting in, but it's something that kind of fell in my lap and I was just like, I'm really good at this. And yeah. it's like, you know, how do you deter from something that you know is really good? And then it's like you become a brand and a business and a, it of becomes course. all these other things. And then... We're here, sitting exactly. at a private talk couch. It's, and it's also because we did it the healthy way. We did it because we wanted to do it, because we like doing it. We don't have to like, like be, um, how you say that in English? So sometimes I lose my English, but there is no, we have no problem with this industry. You, you know, I, I will never talk about bad, badly about this industry, but because it brought so much to my life in a in a healthy way. My mind has always been like happy to be here. Agreed. You and know? that's why like with here, you know, even though like I said, I haven't shot in over three I say three, I've said that so many times, but like probably four years now. But you know, the business is a big part of who I am and what my of brand course. was. And so I, I you know, I not in it anymore, but I have nothing bad to say. Of my course. experience was really great. And for me, it only opened up who I was as a woman, as in a person. And it's, you know, it has it doesn't define me, but it is definitely a big part of who I am. And, yeah. you know, I have, you know, nothing but great things to say about my experiences. So for me, it's about educating private talk about what, you know, our experiences are on from set to family life and all these things like that. So I appreciate yeah. you taking your time oh, for coming here. Um, so from going out with that, you knew you started becoming really successful over there. How did you come to America and like break into those doors? Because that's a whole other realm. So after working all over Europe, mainly for Rocco and then other big production, um, there is an very well-known man in the industry uh, named John Stalliano, who owns Evil Angel. He was always famous for his Batman series. Batman, yes. I know you know Batman. I know Batman. <laughs> I think I've seen you butt in the cover several times. I have been on the on the cover several times. Why? No. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I have a big butt. Maybe right. I don't. Maybe private talk knows. Maybe they don't. You know that... Uh, for a while, I, I used to bust his balls and tell him, like, hey, let me shave my butt, put a thong, we take a picture, because I have a big butt, too. We take oh, a we had to throw that one in there. <laughs> right. But Shameful butt. Let, right. Let's take a picture of my butt. Just my butt. King Kong ain't got shit True. on me. <laughs> True. <laughs> and, like, like I, I told him, let's 
do it for the ap- the month of April, so as an April, April Fool's. Fools, and then you open and you see me and like this, you're, right? I think that would be great, not for me to watch, but my everyone. <laughs> exactly. Well, he always said no, and then one day he comes to me, he's like, hey, let's do it, and I chickened out. I was like, mm, I don't think it's my brand. I was just kidding me. You, know? uh, you got called out and you couldn't do it? I, yeah, basically. I, I like yeah. it. So did he give you your first shot? Yeah, so he contacted me because he saw me in all these movies, European movies, Rocco, Christoph Clark, all that, and he was like, hey, I'm doing a big movie, uh, but it's going to be a lot of dialogue in it, and I know your English is not great, so if you want to do it, I need you to work on your English. And uh, I did. Uh, came to America for the movie, and I loved it, man. It was such another world compared to uh, the European uh, business you know and uh again i used to jerk off to so many girls in the in the industry in america from america that was like yeah i'm gonna have sex with those women now like i was just excited to do it and um almost right away like people were like very curious why would this guy bring a guy that no one knows in america Mm -hmm. when there was so many guys in America to shoot but at that time was there so many guys in America too because I feel like the porn industry like yeah. you know you know a lot of people are guys you know you see them but I feel like it's kind of really small it it was and it wasn't it's like everything like there's always been a lot of male performers but not a lot of good, good male performers. I can understand that which is you know you, few and far between you can't really you know you never know what you're gonna get exactly exactly and so when uh when he brought me here, like everyone got curious, why this guy? Why is he bringing this guy? So right after I finished the movie, I stayed an extra month, but right away I was booked for the whole month. And um, liked it. I liked it. You liked it? You liked all the sex? I liked all the sex. I liked LA. I liked, you know, like just... All the attention, uh, uh, all, uh, the, the, all those things. The it's job very was different. And the job was so easy, like like coming from Europe, like you would do scenes for Rocco, which were like gonzo scene, and you would do like three, four hour scenes. I'm like, isn't he put you like through a gauntlet like type stuff? Or exactly, it's like, like, like you he do works scenes work like, like forever. And then when he was in the scene, there was an hour scene, but when it was you, it was like three, four hours. So you I know how like, that goes now, don't you? are a director, you know? How that well, yeah, I, I like to make, goes. I'll make it simple for everyone. But, but, and then I come to America and I show up and then an hour later, I'm showered and ready to go do another then scene you get somewhere spoiled. else, right? You like, get yeah. Spoiled. There is a reason why pretty much every European performer has come to America and never go back. That's true, though. It speaks a lot, and I feel like I mean, you know, when I was in the business, like we, like when it would come over, it's like it's just a different type of sex like a different kind of like energy and like kind of thing and i don't know if it's because of the trainings or per se because some of most mm-hmm. of you guys come through either through rocco like when he, yeah. had, he actually had a school probably not at that time when you were but like no, no. that whole like the training thing it's yeah. like it's it's just like i don't know it's just more of a loving affection way. so i feel like it's as a female performer i feel like it, it makes the women more um I guess appealing to like let more things out that wouldn't have of happened course. before because it's more of like a safe thing where it's of like course. you're like someone's girlfriend or boyfriend but you're not. Mm-hmm. It's exactly. like, you know. And Le- then you have porno girlfriends and boyfriends and it becomes an establishment of like how your comfortability level which of goes course. a little bit further of, course. of what that is. If, you, if you're having sex and it works the same like for men and women like if I work with a girl and she makes me feel special I'm going to want to give her more and it's the same thing the other way. If I can make a girl feel special she's going to give me more. And uh, uh, for a man like me, what turns me on is to see the pleasure I give to a woman to make her come. That's what's going to turn me on and keep my dick hard the most. So I'll do anything for that to happen. To get that shit. Yeah. (laughs) And so by doing that also, you get to have girls that really like working with you and ask when they can to work with you. Mm -hmm. So it's also like how I became successful in, in America is because like, Directors and producers like me, even so, even though sometimes I can be a diva and a pain in the ass. I have things. You I'm, a diva? No. Don't hate. <laughs> but but at the same time, like like girls wanted to work or fuck me or whatever. So it made it. You know, I'm. I think I made it. I make it easy for women. I I can understand. I can relate to that. I think that it's like you. Um, 
it's like having a good day at work or having a bad day at work. Exactly. You know what you know what you're getting on the table. You know that you're gonna show up. And you're gonna do your job. You're not gonna have any wood problems. You're not gonna like it's not gonna take yeah. forever. You're gonna treat the woman with respect. You're yeah. gonna make sure that everyone yeah. has fun on set and it's you know call it a day. Like you said, an hour exactly. later you could be in your car and be going home and having a nice lunch uh, or going uh, yeah. home and, and doing we, whatever else you need to do. What's funny is we do a job that's so interesting in a like 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 a social level. It's you can't have sex with a man or with a woman and give everything and look like you guys are so in love and half hour later you're like, okay, cool, see you next time, have fun. But that's what's what's great about entertainment is because yeah. at the end of the day, it, even though we're not, you know, on big screens, like, well, some big screens we are, but we're not mm -hmm. like, you know, these big Hollywood production movies, but we are doing movies and it's the movies that people don't watch, but they're watching and it's a production, you know, it's not, you know, you, if anybody should know, it's just like, I always say it's like we're sexual athletes, mm -hmm. you know, it's like we go and it's like we do, we go and we do a game and then we go home and we yeah. have a life that's sometimes you have a significant other, sometimes uh -huh. you don't, sometimes you have a dog like myself, <laughs> you just don't know what it is. So from going early on, like you said, you've always been a highly sexual person. You started yeah. young on. Is there any tips that you had that like worked for you all the time? Like that made you not either, you know, the first time you came super quick. Is there something that you like did that made you just your go to? Is there anything that you could tell the private talk listeners out there for any advice out there for any men out there? Well, well, um, when I was joking about being a diva and, you know, wanting specific things uh, on set, it's more like I've always been myself. I've always hated when people would tell me, so today you're going to fuck this position first and then you're going to do this for five minutes and this, this. No, for me, it doesn't work like that. You know, I have to be able to do it my, like the way. Because if not, you feel like a robot. Exactly. And again, like, like I come from, I'm a little old school where we don't use pills or anything. We do it naturally by being turned on by the woman. And, and I always found myself in, doing scenes that were just okay mm -hmm. because I wasn't like turned on the right way, you know? Um, it's like forcing it because exactly, you had to be. Not exactly. Exactly. Then be. it becomes professional and I never wanted to feel like it was a professional, like, like, it, like it was a job. Like yeah, you wanted it, to have fun. It, exactly. And that's my, the best way for me to do it. So like the advice, the advice would always be to be yourself and not, the worst thing you can do, and I've had that in the past, like many times where like, for example, I would hire other male performers and you can tell they've watched what I do and then they try to do what I do in my scenes, even though it's not what they're into. Mm -hmm. And that's the best recipe to fail. It doesn't translate the same to way. To fail. One, if I wanted you to do what I do, why do I book you? I just do it myself. Two, if... You do what I do, but you're not into that. You, you're you going to fail miserably. You always have to do what turns you on to be a good performer. I like that. You have to say, I feel like that's what made me, in the sense, like, it, not jaded in what you do. is exactly. because it's like, you have to have those stigmas. And so I feel like the whole stigma of diva gets, like, really it's thrown around way too quickly because I feel like it's, of course. it's just because I know what we want and what we like what works for us doesn't mean that I'm a diva. It just knows that I have standards. Exactly. And, and for your mental health, it's important to do only what you're into because you can go home after the scene and feel miserable and, and think like, what the fuck, what, what, why did I do this shit? You know, uh, to last long in this industry, and you know it, you have to keep your head straight. That's true, because a lot of people, you know, they come in here really quickly, they think they know it, and then just, you know, they fall between the cracks because they're just, like you said, they either do things that they're not ready for or they're not ready to handle certain situations. Of course, of course. Or sometimes it's just about, you know, you come, come, you can come in the industry, 18 years old. You're from the middle of nowhere. You arrive, and that works also men and women. You arrive in LA. The only people you meet are people from the industry. So you're only surrounded by people that on leave porn 24/7, and and it, it can be really hard. And then all of a sudden, you're 18 years old, making a lot of money. Like just like not knowing how to end all of that, the fame, all of a sudden people start to tell you you're pretty or you're a good looking man and you're great and you do this and it's a lot to handle when you're very young. 
Especially with not having the right people around you, exactly. you know, and exactly. it, it, it goes along with like having a right head on your shoulder and things like that. Um, so you've been so successful in being, you know, in France being really successful here in America being successful mm -hmm. with all those people. Have you ever been courted or DM'd by a celebrity female that have wanted to be, you know, so many, we get the women have like been slid in DMs, but do you have any of those that happen to you? Yeah, I've had a lot of those actually. You know what? <laughs> Tell us here you, at Private Talk. Listen, I'm not going to say any names, but what's funny. I want the truth! <laughs> That scared me. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll tell you <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Sing, baby canary, yeah. sing. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've had a lot. You, you know what's interesting, and uh, I'm sure you get a lot of like crazy DMs and people sending you weird shit, but women go way further than men. Like, towards me, so I get my share of dick pics to uh, men's buttholes and <laughs> shit that you sh I'm not into. And every time I feel like I, I looked at the sun for 15 minutes because it's printed in my fucking, you know, I. <laughs> but You see white spots. Right? Like, like, that. like, why did I do this to myself? I'm in the shower crying, <laughs> you know. But women go way for some of the videos I get. Some like what? Folk. Just fucking themselves, or like, like what? Like yeah, or like fucking like like like. But I mean, like uh, regular women or like celebrity, like have a you little bit of everything. No, I've so you had, had a celebrity like listen, come on your DM and show you her oh, asshole. I've had many celebrities. Tell me a name. I one? can't say a name. That's Not messed one? up. No, that's messed up. Why? Because they slid like, in your DM. It's probably it's public knowledge. Well, I don't want to. You know, maybe because. I've had sex with some of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so can we get a number and count how many you've had sex with somebody's friend? We don't have to know their names. It's the celebrity sex tape number. I had a, at least like 10 celebrity. In, they, did they in pay you? Different level. No, I don't. I don't I'm uh, just kidding. I no, no, but like some people do it. Like, listen, again, it's not a money thing. It's never a money thing. Sometimes. So I mean, you actually, did you have a crush on any of these celebrities that like slid in your DMs? and? Said, yeah, like, there was a couple of them. <laughs> Look at your eyes. Like, yeah, there like was, no, there was a couple of them. I remember like seeing that girl in a movie and it was like, <laughs> like the people in these movies with her were like. Which movie? I'm not going to say the movie. <laughs> like, good try though, but you know. And, and. Dude, and I remember seeing that movie, and it was a crappy movie, but I was like, man, she is hot as fuck. And like a couple of weeks later, I get a DM, and it's like her, and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Do you think it's fake? Like, like, it can't be her for real. And then the account is verified, and then... Then it gets real. Like, I'm like, is it really you? And then she sends me a video. Hey, Manuel, like, I love your movies. I, I, wish, a man, I wish a man kissed me the way. <gasps> and then the next thing you know, she sends me videos of her with giant dildos in her ass. Like, you know, yes. I'm like, oh, shit, no way. Yes, you know? applause to whoever that was. Yes. <laughs> I like that though. I've always wondered that because like you, you always hear like the female version, uh -huh. but like I mean, you guys like you, male performers, y'all are fuckers. Like you know what I mean? Like you, you're there, you're studs. Like you know what I mean? So it's I always wondered, but I mean, I guess good for you. I mean, <laughs> so if you had, since you can't tell us that, what is your like? If you could do a celebrity sex tape with anybody, what would your ideal celebrity sex tape be? I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. Mm, I definitely take her down. She's uh, hot. Yeah. You know who I like to... Would you have like a... Would that just be just you and her? Because I mean, you're yeah, kind of like, I like a... I like one-on-one like on one oh. I like one-on-one on one sex. Oh, you've changed these times. Yeah. Well, no. Like, it doesn't mean I don't like the rest, but I like, you, you know, um, there is the things you can do and like doing, and there are the things you love doing. I like my attention to be focused on one person. I like that too. Like we were talking about another episode how there were, she, the person had said that they had never been with two men and I was like, I've done it twice but it keeps you busy but you know, I'm, I like, I'm a pleaser. I like to do one thing. It's just a lot of things going yeah. on and I'm selfish so I like it to be about me. So, you know? And, right. And then, but then also sometimes like, like you don't realize that you're giving more attention to one or than the other. Because you're into what you're doing yeah. and it's not like... Or sometimes I, I've had scenes in the past where like I'm going to work with... Like, Two girls, one I never had sex with and one I already had sex with a bunch of times. And I'm going to tend to you, go a little more towards the one I never had sex. you've already felt that pussy, so it's like, you know. You know. 
And nothing against the other girl. I love, I still. You just want new you know, pussy. You're just you, like a man. It's you, like, you know, exactly. a little kid in a candy store. You want to take one lick of that pop before you like go to something else. You already know that's convenient. That's the right way to. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have like a crazy sex story that you've that never talked? It could be on set. It could be on in a your personal life. I don't know how story. crazy you get in your personal life. I don't, I don't get crazy at all. Like I don't either. That's why I was, I felt I'm like, I'm the prudest like, person. I don't have like, sex anymore. It just happens. You yeah. Know? Well now I'm in a relationship, so it's not like when I was single and fucking pretty much everyone I wanted. Uh, but, um, no, I don't do crazy. I had funny stories like where, okay, you, what's the funniest? Well, well it, when, um, long time ago, I was single and, you know, we would all go to conventions, in Vegas and things like that. And some of my friends from France would come, but they have nothing to do with the industry. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it would be like orgies in my room. Because you're Manuel and you call one girl, they're all coming. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> True. <laughs> Thanks. I'll give you a check later. Like, you should be my PR. I should hire I you as a... a I have a lot of catchphrases for you that have been really great. You, right. know? you should hire Yeah, me. I should hire you as a PR for me for sure. But uh, it, it was always awkward. And, and those or orgies, I would always end up not fucking. So you started them and you're like, all right, I'm out. Well, it was just like those were my, my friends... So you were Some of them I grew up with, great and wingman. I felt like it was so awkward to fuck next to those people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like so no swords touching. Not only that, like, like for example, I don't bring friends on set. Okay. Especially if I'm performing. Yeah, it's awkward because it's like you're naked, you're fucking. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's vulnerable. It's very weird. I mean, it's kind of like why we stopped working together. It got, True. you know, we worked together, we did really good scenes, but then when True. we became like friends, like exactly. it became like. I can just make fun of you like my big brother, and it's like, I don't want to see your dick. You don't have exactly. a dick to me anymore. It's, it's, <laughs> so I'm like, you don't have a dick it, anymore to me. I'm sorry to say that, it, guys out there. No, I, I, I get it. Like, 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 I felt the same way. It was awkward. Like, we didn't even have to say, hey, we're yeah. going to stop working together. It's just together. a mutual respect. People, and it was exactly. Like, people would call me, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. And people know, really thought weird. they're like, what happened? What did he do? Yeah. I'm like, he didn't do anything. It was just the fact that it's like, when you become friends with someone, and not just someone friends you see on set, and you're like in someone's home and their family life. Exactly, it's hard yeah. to like be like, yeah, I'm gonna go fuck you later. Like, yeah. I don't know, I may call me fucking wrong. I don't know. No, <laughs> no, I know. And also, like, like I know you were very jealous of my singing voice. <laughs> jealous, and just because. Just, just because I'm a great singer, and you were like, man, like. Private talk. If you want to know what this man is talking about, I hope you guys are liking and subscribing to this channel because I'm about to school him right now. <laughs> but um, see, so when we were our, part of our friendship, I used to host these like, parties and we would have um, karaoke nights and we would awesome do parties. American Idol and like DJ Hero and all these fun games because it's fun to be a big kid. And uh, we definitely went to Hollywood several times. So his name was Baby Canary because he thinks he sings like a baby canary. I, I feel like my uh, voice is the exact... Cr just picture this. The voice of an angel and of a baby canary mixed together. That's my voice. And my that's what voice. you have here, guys. You heard it first. <laughs> Actually, I've heard it several times, but you're going to hear it on private talk. So can you give our listeners out there like a, like a singing voice? Well, but that's can you messed up. Can like, you give it? You uh, need something playing back? No, no, here's the problem, okay? We just came back oh, from scared. Vegas. Oh, you have the Vegas voice. I have the Vegas voice, and it, it's not fair. I think, like, maybe we'll come back and do it. So part two. Part maybe, two. maybe we should do, you know, we'll do, like, a, a singing challenge. Yeah. You know, you do have a lot of platforms other than just in the industry. You do yeah. Twitch. Tell Private Talk what that's about, because I've been yeah. on there, and I was on a dancing part. Maybe yes. we need to go and do singing. We and, need to do this. And we can do this, and I can sing and, and show you how great you're and, not. And you guys need to be on Twitch, too. That would be great. So people can watch you watch this live. It's yeah, I think it'd be fun. Yeah. So what do you what do you do so, with Twitch? So basically, twi what Twitch is, it's a game originally a gaming platform. So it's like webcaming, but instead of like uh, playing video games, showing your boobs or your ass or your dick, you you show your gameplay. But Twitch has evolved so much now, where there there are different uh, type of channel. And some people, they also have what they call IRL's channel, which is like you go out with your friends and you, it's a live feed of you guys going out, having fun, discover, talking to people. You know, There is a section called the Just Ta Chatting channel, which I do a lot where it's you talking to people and 
different topics that a lot of people do great podcasts to. And it's no gaming. It's just you're talking one on one. Yeah, and, and not necessarily gaming. You don't have to do a channel for gaming on Twitch anymore. Okay. My channel is, it's called Manuel Ferrar TV. Follow twitch.tv slash Manuel Ferrar TV. I'm There plugging my shit. You should. That's why we want yeah. it. And uh, my channel is a mix of all that, which I do uh, gaming, but I do also uh, every Friday afternoon, I do, uh, not today, but uh, I do like an advice show with another French streamer. We do a thing where we get actual calls from people nice. and they tell us their story or they ask us for advice and we joke with them. We don't make fun of people. We, we make fun with them of the situations or like we explain things to them and it's pretty cool but I also do like I do a lot of uh, sports so I do a lot of basketball training that I stream I play tennis on stream too and like like so it's really a multi-section very interactive channel yeah so it's fun it's such a huge passion for me it's also like a form of therapy for me like I do this Because you're a big kid, too. I am a huge And that's kid. the thing is what I like, too, is because, like, what we do, too, is which, you know, we're big kids all the time, but it's, like, we do things that we love. It's something yeah. that's, like, we, I know myself, as I never wanted to go to a nine to five. There's people mm -hmm. out there that I, you know, more power to all of you, but I'm just a free spirit where it's, like, if I wanted to express myself sexually or in gaming or, like, the podcast, yeah. it's, like, yeah. I just fly. How, how, how great it is that you can live out of your passion. It is, and it's really a lot of people. I feel like don't do that till later on in life. So I feel yeah. like we're very lucky that I, we yeah. kind of started that journey early. And on. some people don't ever do it. Like you, you know, we're lucky because we found our way. Like l think about it. If you if you never put uh, Michael Phelps in a pool, like how would you ever know that he's the fastest swimmer on the planet? If you never give a basketball to Michael Jordan, how would you know? Like that, you, you know. Well, if you were never in porn, how would people have, or how would you have known? Maybe you would have had a nine to five job and bored as, you know, for the rest of Oh, I've had them for sure. And I definitely mm. was bored. So, you, you, you know, it's you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're just lucky because some people, they go through life, not find, not being able to use their real passion as a, as a job. For sure. And I feel like nowadays, I feel like what I think is so great about, you know, platforms and other streams of, you know, revenue, I feel like it's kind of given people more free will to go out and do those things where before yeah. you kind of were kind of stagnant because you didn't have a lot of things that people have accessibilities to from the streaming to YouTubes to all these like uh, online stores and of like course. all these things that, you know, different things are going on um, with all that you have going on. How do you keep, you know, your Porn life and, and at home life, how do you keep that in, you know, intact? That's what's beautiful about the adult industry and the way I do it is I have to, for example, my crew have the same people. You know my crew. It's like Chris Dream and Kramer and Tony Flush, you know, um, Glenn, makeup artist. So I don't have to be behind them. Those people are with me doing my movies for like the last 15 years. So I, I only need to be on set for like two hours because they take care of everything for me. I don't need to be there for the pictures. Mm -hmm. I'm not the photographer. My photographer takes care of it. He knows his job. He knows what I like. He knows also that I'm an asshole. So if he doesn't do what I like, I'm going to like throw a tantrum. Uh, throw a tantrum? Yeah. Can you tell us how one of those go? <laughs> <laughs> I want this! <laughs> I plug my hair and I stump. <laughs> That's what I do. No, but you know, like, like they know their job. I know my job. If no one loses time, it's easy. So, like, always people think, like, yeah, you do porn and you get to have sex with so many women and it's great. You get to make so much money and it's great. But more than anything, I have the time. I have time to do whatever I want. I can take my kids to school. I can pick them up. I can take them to their sport i can stream when they're in school mm -hmm. at night when they go sleep i can stream too you know i can go to the gym i can it's easy to and to do all this without taking time away from them uh, that's what really porn gives us the time like if i want to wake up at noon i wake up at noon you, you know yeah i don't have to wake up every morning i'm old you get to plan your schedule how exactly. you want it you're very Exactly. Detail. So so it makes life so much easier like that without taking anything away from my family and not spending time. 
So your relationship, you're married. You mm-hmm. guys, do you have an open relationship? Is it just uh, besides no. porn? Do you yeah. just sickly do? Yeah, you know, no, we are, um, we're not swinger. We're not like we. So it's traditional outside yeah. of being in the business. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we started to go out, my uh, wife decided to stop. She was already in the in the industry for for a while, and um, I didn't put pressure. It's funny because some people they come to you know how it is. They, internet they're like you made her quit like, bitch you don't know what you're talking about they just want to find a reason you know i didn't make her quit she wanted to quit am i happy about it sure because you know i'm a little possessive but i didn't make her <laughs> i like how you said that's okay i'm a little possessive <laughs> but it, it's true you know what i mean yeah. like 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 it would have been harder for me if she kept going and also you know people in this industry are petty they like coming to you and say hey I worked with your girlfriend the other day. Man, he was, was such you know. a great scene. And uh, exactly, <laughs> you, you know, you've been in a relationship in this industry. You know how people are; they're just fucking assholes. And uh, but uh, she, for me, she was like, like, no, you, you don't have to stop. I don't want you to stop. Keep going, keep bringing the money, and um, and she's cool with it, you know. Uh, but outside of that, like, like for example, as long as it's for a movie, she's cool if i would stop fucking other people on the side like that wouldn't be cool for sure you know so do you guys have any kind of competitiveness because she's a director in the business so, she just yeah. won you know awards at avn yeah do you guys kind of like do you share those things so together it, it's funny because like uh for uh, we're about to be eight years in the relationship together and for the last for the first five years she was i was working and she wasn't and then uh, we were talking. It, it's funny how it started, right? I, I had to shoot a movie. And there was a month where I was a little lazy. And I'm like, why don't you shoot it? You make it. You do what, whatever you want. Like, you direct that movie. She directed a great movie. And she loved it. And so then we started talking. And she was like, I might start a company. And she wanted to go in, in business with another person that she was friend with, which I thought was a terrible idea, but she still did it, and then ended up splitting. But very quickly, uh, I realized how good she was at it, at it, because she's also a pervert, but she pays attention to detail, and what she does is really like magnificent. And it's a mix of like the old school feature where there's a really good story, but she lets people have sex. So mm-hmm. the sex is also good, because sometimes... You see a feature and they pay attention to all the dialogue and things, but the sex scenes are, uh, like she cares about the sex scene as much as what's around it. And uh, she started killing it and started winning awards and people started going towards her and be like, yeah, I see what you do. I would love to be part of this. And then um, her website started to be very successful and a company approach, approached her and they were, hey, listen, we like what you do, but we think that we could help you make it bigger and better. And so she sold a, a part of her company to those people, and, and it's true that working with them made her company like much bigger very fast. Mm-hmm. She's very successful. She uh, won uh, for the second year in a row uh, Director of the Year, and she won like, I don't know, I don't want to say so did that sting a little bit because you didn't get, you didn't win no, it? Uh, no, no. <laughs> well, first of all, first of all, I, I know want, you've got an ego in there. I want even if she is your wife. No, listen, I have an ego, but my ego has never been like towards the awards. I really don't care. When you when I win it, does that make me happy? Of course. But when I lose it, I see people get really upset. I don't. I feel that. Like, I feel like it doesn't make my day tomorrow going to be any yeah, less or anything. I, I, I feel like everybody's deserving just as much as that award. I'm, exactly. Else. I'm really... No, but cut the bullshit. Not everyone's deserving. Come on. You know there are well, people... Well, some of the nominees there, shouldn't be nominees. Right, but there you are know, people that have won in the past and you're like... Like you? <laughs> I only won it six times. Okay. Just, <laughs> <laughs> so they took it away from me. They took my award away too at school. I didn't go get an award one time. 
Gary got mad, blah, blah, blah. Here we are. Oh, so really? One two times, suck my dick. You know, here we are. <laughs> oh, shit, man. No, they're Politics like, of it all. You know how it is. For me, they've always been good. Like, like I've never done anything. Like, you, you know, I don't I hang mean, out I mean, I hosted people. the yeah. awards, and I did a great it was, job. For no, them. it was an amazing job. My yeah. dancing and singing was great. It was great. No, honestly, like, I hate to say it. I hate to give Tell you props for shit like that. Tell me more. But I don't... Tell me more. <laughs> I don't remember, you know, I'll give Evie and they always do a great production for it. Like they really definitely do. Great. But the year you and Tommy did it was like special. I feel like the production this year was really great too. I feel like all the years it's great. I feel like as far as like the the, the meat of the show and the, like the writers or whatever for my, my year, I, Biased or Not, uh, 2015, if you guys want yeah. to watch it on Showtime. Um, yeah, we did a whole thing. It was, but awesome. it was like a, a song and dance number. It was just really like interactive and it was really fun. Yeah. So um, the way that the internet that the internet has changed us a little bit, and then now we have social media stuff, and then we have even more platforms. Do you think OnlyFans is a good thing or a bad thing? Do you think it's a gift I, or I, curse? I think it's a great thing. I I love that. Listen, again, like there there are different levels in this industry, okay? And very often, be, when you're on top, the, you tend to know more of the people that are on top. And so everyone seems super busy. But there are a lot of people in the industry that are not as busy as, as you were when you were performing or as I am. And back then, some of those people would do two, three, four scenes in a month and they had no other way to make money. And some of them had to quit because it was not enough to leave and go back to... An now, you can not work a lot in the industry but still have a revenue from OnlyFans of Snapchat Premium or whatever you do. And you don't, don't have to spend money on it because you can talk to other performers and share content with them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really amazing that now it feels like this industry is owned by performers way more than by company. And I love that. The other thing I love about it is there are a lot of people that had a great career, but then it's time for them to, to stop either because they're not getting as much work or they don't like it as much as they did, they don't have the passion for it. And it can be really hard to just stop and go back to the real world with a real job. It can be really hard. It allows those people to quit the industry but still make money with their name by having like, like a revenue with what they do. Agreed. I yeah. mean, I think that it's a great platform. I always, you know, we all use it. I think, like you said, the, the biggest part I take all of that is it's the first time I feel like where the performers are finally taking back yeah. what was I kind of like what ours and yeah. our, our what, yeah. what we do for yeah. our fans out there. We are getting to Truth with Texas. I don't know if he's going to handle this game. I think that all these questions are like you've done them, seen them. I can't wait to hear all your answers. <laughs> Can you say Manuel like that again and let me record it so it's my ringtone now. <laughs> okay, up. baby canary, you better, you better, you better stop all your requests. I see why you've been called a diva before. <laughs> it's true. I can't even deny it. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get it. All right. So each card, they're all aces, and you're gonna get a symbol that Miss Texas is gonna tell you. Ooh, Ooh it's a spade here at Private Talk. That's our favorite one. It's a naughty question, which I feel like all your shit is naughty. So I feel like you're one right. of the naughtiest people that I've known. And um, let's see. When's the last time you had sex with your ex? With my ex? Yeah. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a lot of exes in the industry when in you were industry? single and then you like still work with them? Like, is it that a thing? No, I don't. I, I usually once, once I'm done, I'm done. When you're done, you're done. Yeah. So you're, they're no listed. Well, yeah, it doesn't mean I'm mad or anything. Yeah, like, you just, like you're, just you've already like been there, it, done it, that. It's weird. Okay, fuck that question. How about, do you like, in your personal life, do you like watching your partner masturbate solo or do you always have to be a part of the situation? Like, what if she was just fucking to, like, your movie that you directed? Would you be okay with that? Or? No, I love it. I, I, I love watching my wife come, so 
watching her. Real pervert. So are you like in the closet with like, you know, peeping Tom kind of Do thing? I have to be in the closet? Like, no, I just no, like. No, I want you in the closet. That's where you belong. Well, but then <laughs> you want me in the closet just to say like, oh, you came, finally came out of the closet. Right? No, I mean, I already know that you're not in the closet at all, but I feel like you could be a peeping Tom. Like maybe that's just a uh, fantasy of uh, mine. Yeah, no, but I don't mind. As long as I can watch it, uh, I'm cool. Like I want to watch your cum. So if, you know. If it makes you happy <laughs> that I'm hiding to watch my wife, yeah. then I'll, next time I'll tell her. Like, she's going to be like, why are you this hiding? This one's for Texas. Uh, Texas, ask me. Uh, she told Go me behind, get underneath the bed. I don't right. know if you fit with your big ass. But <laughs> Hater. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see. Naughty. Diamond. That's spicy. Are you spicy, Manuel? Not really. Have you ever touched yourself in public? Um, well, yeah, but it was like the setup was, you know, does does in a swinger club count as in public? Mm, I don't know. Like, like, like in public, public. I have like to like ask the, my like, panel of judges right. because I don't know if that's pu like public because it's. I don't know. That's what you're meant to do. I don't know. You know that's a tough one. It, one. One thing, like. But were you booked to be at this swingers club? Or no, I wasn't booked. No, no, I don't do. Like, like if I go to th events like this, uh, like it's because I want to be there. Not like I had like a the weirdest experience at a uh, swinger club. It was in South of France, and uh, there was a lady that came to me, and she's like, "Hey, I like you. Do you want to come with me?" And you know, my husband is here, but he's cool. He likes it. You know. She was hot, so I went there, and uh, I stopped fucking her. And in front of the husband, well, the husband was there, but like I didn't care. Yeah. And then I was already Manuel Ferrara when it happened. Right? <laughs> but then all of a sudden, I With realized that <laughs> I realized <laughs> that the whole club actually stopped just to go around us to watch me fuck her, and it was so weird to me. Like it was. Did and they finish? started clapping. Did and you like, finish? Yeah, I finished, of course. Where'd you finish? On her face? Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite place to finish? <sighs> Anywhere. I mean, if a girl likes, you know. Like, Fuck the girl. Where do you like it? And I hope I you don't say her eye because that's fucked up. Right. Well. No. <laughs> well, I'm a shooter, so even when I don't uh -huh. want the eye, it always goes to that. I'm pretty sure I got you the eye. Send me the Addy. I'm coming <laughs> right. down. But uh, no, like, 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 if if I know the a girl likes it one way, then it's gonna turn me on so much more to do it. Like, like some girls they're really into like the mouth. Some girls are like inside or things like that. Although inside. Uh, like, I do it only when I fuck with condoms. Even in movies, I don't do, like, crimp eye. That's a lie. Because we just had Angela White on my couch, and she said that she cried because y'all did a cream pie scene, and it was the most intense that thing is, she... That is the only time you can see me do that. And because we... You heard it, private talk, only time. It's true. And it's true. It's true. And we talked about it. She asked me... She told you she was on birth control? Like, the whole thing. Like, like, like you know, uh, Angela and I, we... Uh, we talked a lot about that scene, and she knew I didn't do cream pie. Yeah. So we had to talk about it, and... Did you have to ask your wife about it? No, really, because it's not my wife that asked me not to do but it. But it's something that... No, I'm not saying that she doesn't have to, yeah. but I feel like it's a, something that you should, as a couple, if that's something that's like you don't do, I feel like it's something that's just a, something that's communication-wise. Yeah, may, maybe I should have mentioned it. Like, like I, I, I don't know if it was that important important because it, it was never something she cried man well it's important <laughs> well yeah but the i can't, act contro of. I can't the act control of. yeah i can't control do you uh, do that only because the fact that you just don't trust the girls in the industry as far as like doing those types of scenes yeah anything can happen it's not necessarily about trust but like you never know like i'm always surprised when i hear a girl is not on birth control in the industry i'm like oh yeah. i already have four kids uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay i'm okay you know i like it so you're not coming inside her. Got it. Nope. <laughs> Hearts. That's the romantic one. Uh oh. I'm uh -oh. French, so that's my expertise. Did you ever have a crush on a teacher growing up? I had a music teacher when I was a kid, and uh, uh, yeah, I liked her. 
but it was like like really like innocent crush. Like, so it's not something like you went like, back and revisited and was like, I'm no, well. No, no, <laughs> it was not like a perverted <laughs> thing. It was like, it's a kid's crush. She was so nice to me and I liked her class and, it, you know, she. It, it wasn't anything perverted. It was an innocent crush. Yeah. Okay, what was your first sexual experience? Explain to us. <laughs> <laughs> that means it's good. And don't... Uh, I want the truth! The last man. <laughs> no, it's actually not good. Oh, and, uh, yeah, like, tell us more then. That's what's funny. It's that, like... Uh, like people that are not in the industry put male performer on the pedestal, but like no one started being a superhero. No one. My first time, I was like probably three inches away to penetrate the girl when I came. Like I didn't even put it in that I was so turned on that I came. And a little bit like my first time in like pre come or like came on. No, all like the way. like the whole the money shot. Like right, the whole thing. <laughs> And, <laughs> and what's funny is a little bit like my first time in porn I went to clean up and came back and then I was ready again so I was like oh let's do it you're like again. this isn't stopping me and, I'm ready and then I killed it for at least two minutes before I came again <laughs> trust me like uh, how I, uh, many times have you came in one session uh, well it depends because I, I've done a lot I've came a lot jerking off how many times have you come jerking off? I would jerk off like all day, all the time. Like how many, how, like what's like, the like number? 10, 12, 15 10 times. Or, your dick yeah. doesn't get raw? Well, no, but it was to the point. I You're have training a, I have that a athlete down there. I have a there. full skin, I have a full skin, so it's easier. <laughs> but um, uh, to the point that I would have the orgasm, but nothing was coming out. Mm, it's know? like the... P like, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 where, where Does it, it hurt at that time? Like, where did it go? No, it only hurt if you don't let it out. Mm. Like it only hurt if you like. It's like that. It's the, like blue balls. The like, blue it's balls, like that. exactly. I get blue lips. I know. Uh, <laughs> it's the worst. Well, uh, to me, blue balls it would be the equivalent of when women have like um, stomach cramp from menstruation. You know that feeling? That is not the Dude, comparison. It's painful as fuck. Blue balls. Like, you cannot tell me that my menstrual cramps is the same no, no, level. I did not of say it's the same. I say that's the the similar. closest the closest thing you can compare it to. Like everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. Yes, we are. Whoa! <laughs> what a call out! I feel like you set up those buttons just for me. They've been here, but I like them. They it's work for you. They work. <laughs> but I don't think it's a comparison. Maybe I'm not saying that it doesn't hurt and I can't because I don't have no, balls, obviously. But I have blue lips and I've definitely gotten to that urge where it's just like... Wait, what, what's blue lips? Blue lips is the same thing as blue balls. I don't come either. And my lips are just so swollen and aching because they want to come and they don't. Oh. Yeah, because a man came for himself because he was selfish and he didn't fucking finish the job. Oh. Motherfuckers. Everyone in this room <laughs> is now dumb. Just because you remember the button <laughs> thing, you just blinked over there. <laughs> I need a taser for the next time. <laughs> Cross this line. Anytime you're you gonna do anything. <laughs> I like that. Mm, dose of my own medicine. And it's not even that time yet. <sighs> All right, are you ready for this one? Uh, I wonder what card it's going to be. I wonder. Oh, shit. <laughs> It's this one. It means it's kinky. It's a club. Ooh. And we all know you're kinky. I am. Actually. So, um, let's see. I feel like I already asked you that one. So, let's see. Have you ever been caught masturbating? Several times. And by who? Uh, once by a very good friend of mine when I was a kid. I was a girl or a guy? A guy. I was so upset. It, it was. You were upset because you. you it, it was one know. of my best friends. I was upset because he came in my room without knocking, right? And like literally caught me. Did you keep, my hand. Did you keep going, or you were like, "Get no. out of here"? Oh, no. I was like, "Get the fuck out!" And then and I was it, done. Uh, yeah, you just it didn't come out. It was very awkward. Then yeah. I came out acting like nothing happened. He acted like nothing happened. So y'all didn't even talk about it? No, I didn't want to talk about it. No. Nope. That's a, the, awkward. The, you don't know. Why didn't you the, lock your door? Uh, because I didn't have a lock on my door. Mm -hmm. like, you know, I lived in a very polite family that knocks at the door when you want to go in. Oh, so you would never get caught by your mom? Mm -hmm. no. no. 
What happened whenever your mom found out that you actually were not going to be a PE teacher and you decided to do porn? It, it was very awkward because um, my mom, uh, born and raised in France, but my mom is uh, Spanish. She was born and raised in a tiny, tiny village, like super like religious type people, right? And um, also, I was the only uh, kid in my family, the only person in my family that actually went to college. So I went from like the pride of the family, the chosen one, to the dark is horse. in college, okay, to be a P teacher, but still is in college, right? But to, uh, so what does Manuel do now? That's the only thing. See that, to me, I've never been ashamed of my job. I've never been like, like I never felt like I was doing anything wrong, and I'm not. But I know that sometimes when people would ask that to my mom in the beginning, it made it very awkward for her. And that's the only thing that hurt me, that yeah. I never wanted to make my mom feel like that. But at the end of the day, I feel like if your parents love you, it doesn't matter what you do for a living. As long as you're healthy, you're not hurting anyone, you're not doing anything that, you, you, you know, that's crazy, even though porn for some people is crazy. That's all my mom cared about. Is It was like, because when you don't know the industry, you only go by either imagination of what you've heard in the media, and they never talk good about what we do, right? For sure. So perception like, is everything. Are you doing drugs? Did, like, did you get raped? Oh, like you know, mm -hmm. shit like that. No. What happened to you that you decided to do porn? I remember I used to get that all the time. I'm like, yeah. nothing. It was my decision. Yeah. No one forced me. I decided to yeah. do it because I wanted to do it. I like to do it. It's how I express myself, and, and it's a form of art. Yeah. And the majority of people in our industry are like that. Uh, it would be wrong to say that there aren't people that go in the industry for the wrong reason, because it happened. But it doesn't necessarily come from like the porn industry. There are people like that are like... Um, they come already with things that happen. They have. The they already that, have things you know, that are that have they've dealt with that are, that they, that they're just bringing it to the table. And, it's not yeah. because of porn. And and sometimes getting into baggage. porn with this baggage can make like either amplify it or for some people it can be a really good therapy. True. You know. Um, yeah. I it, listen. There is always bad stories. But trust me, the majority of the people in the industry, they are, come happy and they love doing it. And they know like you're surrounded by good people that care about you and want you to be happy. And you know. For sure. And uh, I respect your honesty. You're a porn legend. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for Thank you. coming to Private Talk. Is there anything that you, know, that you would say that changed... Your, to yourself to, if you could say to your younger self anything that you would change different as advice coming into the industry or anything in life I I, uh, I don't know I wouldn't say anything to change anything I would just I would just say like enjoy enjoy all right private talk you heard it Manuel said you better enjoy we're gonna take a quick little break and we're gonna have him put me in the hot seat and see Ooh. what questions Manuel has got for Miss Texas so what questions do you have for me in this hot seat? I've been quarreling you. I've been asking you all these questions. I know there must be something you have to ask. Yeah, Texas. actually, I thought about that when you told me I, I will ask you questions. Because I've always know, knew you as, um, as a performer. Mm -hmm. But I know you've directed movies. I have. Uh, how was that for you? Like, what, uh, did you like it? Was it something that you're planning on doing more you know, I um, it was it was kind of funny how it happened. It kind of kind of happened organically, so I feel like that's always the best way. I kind of just kind of fell into it, but um, I loved it. It was a part because I'm such a, a performer, but I just like like I'm an artist and other things. So it was like my own direction. It was my own, you know, from the wardrobe to every detail. It was just very like the location to picking like the people. every the picking the people, like yeah. what like my envisioning of the scene was, and so like I really got into like the more artistic part of it because uh -huh. um, it's like you as a, a true pervert, you have all these like ideas in your head or you've done, you know fantasies or scenes that you outdo, but you didn't like when it comes to your own. 
Mm-hmm. It was just like un- unleashing my Pandora's box of sexuality. So it was uh-huh. really cool and invigorating. And I felt like I was maybe a little bit too hands on at first because you don't know from being the performer director. You're literally like literally hands on. Literally, at one point I was talking like not the very first one, but towards the end, I because it stopped in the beginning. I was uh, actually performing still. The, the last one I did, I wasn't performing. Uh-huh. So it was. Um, it was a, a really great area of like I was like oh, I just want to fix his balls and I like took, uh, and I like moved it and I was like man I put my hand I was like <coughs> <Slut>. uh, <laughs> I was like uh, no I'm sorry I'm, do you have consent I'm sorry I'm like I don't know <laughs> I want to <laughs> fix his balls I, because it was like stuck you know how it is it didn't look nice and I was my first time like and I shot camera for the first time too this last one. So I was really like putting all my all in it. So I'm like, hold on. And I probably spit too. Did the guy come? <laughs> did the guy come? He did. Uh, you know, and he she had no problem. My balls. He had Ugh. no problem. Well, he didn't come when I touched his ball. But right. he didn't have problems with me doing it. I just, it was just a line. Who would have, like, like sorry, yeah. but who would ever have a problem with you touching the balls? Yeah, but there's also, because I'm a director and like, you know, you don't want to like cross people's boundaries because what if I made someone feel uncomfortable and that's the last thing I would want to do. But I will say all the other ones, I did like do a, I was in a bikini for the part of the other one. I had my ass on that. I was like, oh, you have what problems here? Just here's my tits. I'm a, I'm a helping hand. It's okay. J Mac for sure. It like saw my tits. I think I even, like, I was doing the whole, like we were doing POV like thing. And he was like leaning against me. He's like, this is much easier leaning against a girl but, the director uh, than sure. it is a guy director. Cause he's like leaning and I'm like holding it. But it was just really cool for me. I feel like it just unleashed a lot of things that like, I didn't know I could do. And so, and then like seeing that come to life on like a movie and people purchasing it and getting feedback, it was uh-huh. just kind of really surreal and cool. So I feel like it was just kind of it's elevating. like your baby. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, the first like one really was. picked everything. And I, I used to get very offended when like there would be reviews and people would be like, yeah, it's a good movie. I'm like, good? What do you mean It's not good? great? <laughs> it's, exactly. Like it's your baby. Like you decided everything about it and no one wants to hear their baby's ugly or even just good. <laughs> I would never have an ugly baby. Right. <laughs> True. But True. it's like, I feel like also too, or it's like how you may have portrayed it and then like they didn't get it. Or yeah, then you're uh, like, uh, no, yeah. but that's not how it was. Like the, I remember the first one, like the box cover for me, I did it with Jada um, and it was, I had this whole scene in my head and it was like, we, we like painted each other's asses with paint. So it was like a paint thing and it was like pink and purple and it was like this huge great thing and like we made these like canvases that look like butterflies it was beautiful <laughs> but i don't know like to everybody else i was like but that was like the best thing ever i don't know how well everybody else loved it but i fucking loved it you loved it that's yeah. good yeah no i definitely like it though it's it's definitely i like being hands-on mm-hmm. that's good would you uh would you ever like want to be part of like like a like a co directing production with my wife for example oh i see where this is going you know i never say never i uh-huh. like to i like to challenge myself i like of to course. do different things and i like to do things i've never done before like and you know what she does and the you know like the whole cinema all cinematography of like the whole yeah. like even but still having good sex my whole thing in portraying the business like where i elevated to this point is like showing sexuality in, in a different light and showing like women's like feminicity and like the rawness and beauty of all that stuff like yeah. that. So that's why, you know, with, with someone like your wife, she's, I feel like she portrays that. So like I said, I never say never. I like uh-huh. being, you know, involved in good projects and things like that. So, you know, if it works, it works. So yeah. never say never. I'll, I'll talk to her. <laughs> she would love that. I know already, like, I know she would love to do something like that. She likes to do project with other girls from the industry. And like, like she's done things with Joanne Angel. She did things with Toya. She did things with uh, Adria Ray. And uh, she likes that. She likes, and she likes like men too. But she, she, I know she feels like, like she has a different connection with women, and you can bond. It just brings yeah. out, I feel like, the same way how we, you know, made references as, as performers and how you, mm-hmm. like, feel comfortable with somebody. I think with the woman mind and because we're such awful women but really feminists at heart, that uh-huh. it's, we portray it and, it and when you talk to someone like-minded, it brings out things course, from yeah. each other that you probably may not have known or maybe you of do course. and it kind of, like, glorifies yeah. those things. So a, a, a little bit like Mason used to get that out of other women. Women, yeah. Because, you, know. you know, there's not a lot of women directors and I think yeah. that that's also why I Well, that changed. Fascinated. Now there's a lot more. Yeah, but at that back time, yeah, it's back, like back we didn't then. have anybody to really like relate to us uh-huh. as performers and that. So for I feel sure. like it's really cool when a performer kind of crosses over because they have that that empathy for, yeah. you know, as a performer as well, even though you are behind the camera. Yeah. 
No, no, and it's great. It is great that there is that many women. That are, like I don't like, see. For example, I don't like lo- the term. I I hate when people say porn for women. Like like men and women, we have our differences, but like women can also like Gonzo and can like stories. Men can also like movies with stories and everything. I just I just like just having like different views from everyone without having to like put a like a, a tag on it that's like oh they're women so they make porn yeah. for women no you don't make you make porn you try to make porn for everyone, everyone. not just you know I think that's what fascinated me so much about it was because I minored in sociology in, in mm-hmm. college and so it, I've always been really fascinated about how people are in their surroundings and like how that has an appeal and like an effect on how they either from what they watch, you know, in porn wise or whatever, because it's what we're telling the world. And yeah. I think that it's really cool how it's, you know, kind of, it's a melting pot to all of those things. So I'm all about female empowerment and I like all Same. of that stuff. I'm all about that too. Yes. Do you think that the word, like, you know, we say like porn star, do you think that that word is thrown so loosely now? Do you think that it even has meaning as it did before at one time? I, I don't really care about it. honestly like, like, hey, you want to be called a porn star? You've done two scenes and you feel... You feel like a porn star and be a porn star. I don't, I don't, again, like, like, you know, you, you, I, that's I, coming from the legend. <laughs> Even that, I'm like, how does that feel? I'm for just you? an old man. When, Cause when, I feel like when you hear that word, how does that make you feel? You, it makes me feel old. That's all it makes me feel like. I remember it takes me back when I first came to America and I, I met Mark Davis for the first time. And I was like, you're a legend. He was like, that only means I'm old. And now I live this and I'm like, fuck. I am well, old. I think that it's much more than just being old. I think it's a respectable thing. You've done a lot of great work and you've done a lot of scenes, you know, even with myself that have brought mm-hmm. things out in myself as a performer and just being in a safe, comfortable zone where nowadays you never know what you're going to get with a performer yeah. on set, you know, and a lot of people yeah. unfortunately have had things that happen on set that aren't even happy and not good, like good and bad. And I yeah. feel like I'm fortunate to have, uh, have had a safe place to work in always and really been with performers like yourself. So again, thank you for taking your time and coming on my private great talk. Pleasure. I am. Um, let us let my fans know one more time where we can find you and your Instagrams, your Twitch. My Instagram got deleted, but oh, uh, you've been naughty on there. Not even. That's Tell what's us your crazy. Twitch channel again. So my Twitch channel. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Manuel Ferrara TV. You heard him, and um, hopefully I'll be on there very soon, so make sure yes. you watch it. I'm about to do a, another uh, charity stream, too. Oh, cool. So. Definitely will have to be a part of that then. Awesome. All right, Private Talk, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel, and I hope you've enjoyed this podcast.